INFJs are known for their emotional reticence, especially when they first meet new people. INFJs won't let themselves be known easily. They first need a good sense of somebody's character before deciding to trust. How do INFJs go about screening out bad character individuals? How do INFJs look for compatible personality traits in potential friends and lovers? Let's look at seven passive and active ways the INFJ goes about unraveling your personality. Let's dive in. 1. INFJs will absorb your energetic essence. The INFJ's process of getting to know someone thoroughly is often very subtle. A lot of people like to actively test others to get to know their character by asking probing questions, verbally poking and provoking a bit to get a reaction out of them comparable to hitting the metaphorical beehive with a stick. While this can be a quick and effective strategy for getting to know someone, most INFJs find it rude to rattle people, especially when they've just met. The person you're trying to get to know may get defensive when poked, which makes it harder to know them. Instead, INFJs create a warm social atmosphere by gently and non-judgmentally engaging the one they are trying to get to know in conversation. During the conversation, the INFJ with all of their senses will tune into the other energetically. The conversation is often superficial small talk when it's a more public setting. For example, when meeting co-workers at the INFJ's new job, or when talking to family members of a friend at a birthday party. Yet, energetically, it's not superficial at all. Underneath the surface level conversation, with their heightened senses, the INFJ absorbs the other person's energetic essence. INFJs tune into the energy field frequency of the other person, like the frequency of an FM radio broadcast station, and then feel out what the quality of the signal is. Is the signal clear? Or is there a lot of static? Is the signal stable? Or does it fluctuate a lot? Can I hear music playing? Or do I hear an intellectual talk show? If there's music playing, what kind of music? If it's a talk show, what are the topics they discuss and how is the dialogue? And can I hear it clearly or is the sound muffled? And how does this all make me feel? These are all metaphors for how the INFJ tunes into the other's energy field, heart, and mind and tries to capture the other's essence to determine their nature. Even though conversation helps, the INFJ doesn't need to be in conversation to feel out someone's energetic essence. The INFJ can absorb someone's energy by just being in the same room with them. This energetic download process starts whenever the INFJ is around the person they are trying to get to know. However, it takes some time. Needless to say, INFJs don't always get their assessments right. However, tuning in energetically is in most cases the INFJ's most reliable and profound way to determine someone's nature, because energy never lies. 2. INFJs may abruptly jump into the deep end during conversation. Now, when the INFJ notices that the person they are meeting for the first time is potentially interested in some profound topics like the INFJ is, the INFJ may suddenly jump into the deep end with them during conversation. For example, after a couple of minutes of meeting you, the INFJ may casually start talking about alternate reality, consciousness, reincarnation, or whatever profound topic within the quantum physics, philosophy, or spiritual domain they sense you have a mutual interest in. What are you doing? Light speed skipping. The INFJ does this to test if their hunch about your openness is correct and to see how deep your interest actually goes. It's like they pull you off a steep cliff into the sea without notice, to see how deep you can go and how long you can hold your breath. INFJs indulge in existential subjects for sport. How much existential pressure can you tolerate without going insane? You'll win an INFJ's respect easily by showing your existential calluses. INFJs also pull you into the deep end to skip small talk and connect more deeply via that mutual interest often not a lot of people share. Hold on. Remember, to the INFJ, the quality of connection is paramount, not the frequency. By jumping into the deep end without warning, the INFJ gets a good sense of your personality. And once the connection is established, it lasts a long time. 3. INFJs listen deeply and people reveal their secrets automatically. Many INFJs had people they've just met share intimate things with the INFJ without the INFJ asking. Whether it's a first date, meeting a new co-worker, a mutual friend of a friend or a stranger next to them on that park bench. INFJs regularly hear the phrase, wow, 
I haven't shared that with anyone before. What's funny is that INFJs would never ask of you to reveal your secrets or pry into your business. No. INFJs find that socially distasteful and respect your privacy. However, people sharing their innermost secrets with them is commonly a byproduct of the INFJs' default state of deep listening. INFJs are curious creatures who love to understand things profoundly. They are determined to understand the speaker's perspective and pay close attention to their verbal cues, non-verbal cues, emotions, and energy. INFJs aim to create a warm social atmosphere during conversation where people can reside in without being judged for who they are. Since it's very pleasant and also very rare for someone to be so attentive, people often reveal all their secrets by accident due to the chronic unmet need to be truly seen and listened to. The INFJ often is praised for their deep listening skill that subtly invites people to talk automatically. Even though the INFJ is puzzled by all the given accolades, because listening deeply is so normal to them. Nonetheless, it's an INFJ's powerful way to have someone unravel their personality to them without even trying. 4. INFJs Listen actively Out of genuine curiosity to unravel someone's character, whereas listening deeply could be considered to be more of a passive openness to receive the other wholeheartedly, INFJs use active listening on top of that to actively zoom in on what's being shared by the other. Someone may share during conversation with the INFJ. So since my teenage years, I've been obsessed with writing horror movie scripts. But over the years, I figured it's not in the cards for me to make a living out of that. So yeah, I chose to become an accountant, to have some job security, and a steady income. Anyway, I have this important accountant exam next week, and I... The INFJ may gently interrupt here with... Wow, wait a minute. Horror movie scripts? That's fascinating. Like, I've never met someone who's into writing those. How did you get into writing horror movie scripts? INFJs may regularly, gently interrupt the speaker, actively respond to what's being said with further open-ended questions, or jump back to an earlier interesting point within the conversation to dig deeper. This may seem counterintuitive, because interrupting usually is seen as rude and disruptive. However, when done with gentleness, tact, and a sincere curiosity, active listening is an extremely powerful way to dive deep into someone's world. What's more? Is that one done right? The other will gladly show you around in there. Open-ended questions give the other a lot of freedom to speak their minds. It's more of an art than a science and never an interrogation. The INFJ's secret ingredient, however, is genuine curiosity. Genuine curiosity is intoxicating. Tell me, how often nowadays in this hyperactive and permanently distracted world does someone sincerely take the time to get to know you and actually wants to know? INFJs intuitively understand this and let further questions flow from their genuine curiosity to purposely unravel your character. 5. INFJs unravel someone's character by uncovering that person's beauty. INFJs are lovers of beauty, idealists, and treasure hunters at heart. As lovers of life, art, wisdom, and beauty, they seek its nurturance out everywhere within their creativity, vocation, intimate relationships, and inanimate objects. As the metaphorical treasure hunters, INFJs have a strong internal radar that detects where buried treasure is waiting to be found, and that includes the human soul. Let's go back to that earlier horror movie script conversation example. So after the accountant briefly disclosed her dormant obsession with writing horror movie scripts, the INFJ's treasure detector went off. The treasure detector was triggered by the peculiar practice of writing horror movie scripts itself, the brief radiant eyes of the accountant while speaking about it, or a sadness around the subject. The INFJ now wants to dig deeper here and find more clues for treasure. So the INFJ asked how the accountant got into writing horror movie scripts. The accountant now responds. Ever since I was old enough to watch horror movies, I always did so with my dad every weekend. We were so into them because they were always so exhilarating and scary. Fridays were my favorite days of the week because then my dad and I would go to the local video rental shop pick a bunch of horror movies and get lots of snacks and have a horror movie night. I wanted to create the same feelings for others by writing exciting horror movie scripts. It's my one true passion and love. I hope one of my scripts will see the big movie screen one day. Now, the INFJ has struck gold. The authentic enthusiasm and passion by which the accountant describes her unconventional passion is palpable. Just by trying to uncover someone's beauty with a simple, open-ended question, 
the INFJ got the accountant to share a lot of interesting intimate information that can trigger the INFJ's further curiosity and exploration. INFJs understand that beauty needs a witness, and everyone has a dormant beauty, longing to be uncovered and seen. That beauty is their innermost authentic self, passion, love, and interests. Many people aren't even aware of their own beauty. However, when the INFJ shines a light on it, those people will know and willingly show their beauty to the INFJ. 6. INFJs unravel someone's character with humor. INFJs are known to be serious and kind most of the time, yet they have a mischievous side that comes out through their humor. INFJs can have a witty, playful, dry, dark, cynical, deadpan, shocking humor. Joke bombs they'll throw underneath any conversational subject to tear it down in the spirit of play, fun, and mischief. When they first meet someone within a group setting of mutual friends, let's say, INFJs may say something outlandish with a straight face out of the blue during a serious conversation. The INFJ is trying to shock and see how that new person reacts to that. What's their sense of humor? Are they quick on their feet with jokes? Can they appreciate absurdity as well? Or do they take everything seriously all the time? The INFJ's playful jokes are more of an invitation to the other to play as well and chime in with jokes. It's like the little kid that throws a ball to another kid hoping they will throw it back. It's a way to show that the playful, unpredictable left turns during conversations to lighten the mood are always allowed within the confines of their social interaction. With their humor and playfulness, INFJs want to show that they're silly and playful, and therefore, the other is allowed to come out and play as well. This way, the INFJ quickly gets to know the other's character, but in this particular situation, the INFJ leads with humor. 7. INFJs, just stare at you until you confess all of your sins. If all else fails, the INFJ just stares at you with their infamous INFJ stare, piercing your soul until you confess all of your sins from this life and all past lives. Despite the fact that I'm obviously joking here, there's some truth to it funnily enough. Silence can be an effective tool to make those who are uncomfortable with silence start talking due to a nervous reaction. An intimidating stare can also make others awkward and trigger them to nervously start talking about anything to escape their awkwardness. Now INFJs won't use their stare deliberately to get people to talk. Often INFJs aren't aware that they stare at people during conversation. However, it often happens that people start disclosing unwarranted random things to the INFJ because of the infamous intimidating INFJ stare. What do you think? What else do INFJs use to unravel someone's character? Leave your thoughts in the comment section below. I respond to all of them. Watch this video next for more INFJ content.